You guys are singing really well this morning. You guys can be seated. Sit down, sit down, sit down. It's, it's good, okay. You may have to stand up again sometime. You, you just never know. Um, Anna, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. We are so glad to see you here today. <laughs> Lovely to have you here. Lovely to have our guests today. You know, I want to, because we have guests with us today, I'd like to make sure that I mention that you are welcome here. We want you to feel at home. And most importantly, this is God's house, not our house. We are here to be with him together today. And it, just a couple of words of how we kind of make ourselves at home. Number one is the coffee bar. In the other room is coffee bars, refreshments. You want to make sure that you go over there. Given freely by the folks here at LifeBridge. There's no charge. It's just loving on you, loving on each other. It's a great opportunity to enjoy a cup of coffee and just sit back and relax. You're welcome to go in there anytime. And this morning we have something special on the coffee bar. We have something special called the Jesus cookie. If you haven't been there yet, <laughs> you need to make sure and go get one, okay? You need to make sure because we have a very special guest with us this morning. We have Bill Bennett. He is here um, from Kairos Ministries, and he's going to um, come on up here and tell you just a little bit about what they're doing here at LifeBridge this morning. The Jesus cookies have to do with him. Can I, can I borrow another? Yeah. There you go. Alan, would you do me a favor? Would you go get the camera? Put it on us, please. Um. I'm sorry. I was just worried you were going to have to listen. <laughs> <laughs> it means you need to come up here, Bill. <laughs> this will work. This, this is Bill Bennett, longtime ministry man from here in Aaron Porter County. He wants to tell a little bit about what it is that uh, he's doing with Kairos. Am I saying that right? Kairos, Kairos. ministry. Okay. Just like the syrup. All right. Very good. <laughs> Tell us just a little bit about that is and why we're sending you to prison. Because Jesus told me to go to prison. <laughs> he good said reason. I was in prison and you came and visited me. Good, very good reason. And in Hebrews, Paul tells us, treat the prisoners as though you are there with them. He doesn't say, go check them out if you want to, if you feel like it. He says, do it. And if, is there anybody here that doesn't believe the Bible is the word of God? Is there anybody here that believes you can pick and choose what you believe and what you obey? Matthew 28, 19, Jesus says, go into all the world, make disciples of all nations. Did he say, don't go into Valpo High School, or don't go into Valpo City Hall, or don't go into the Porter County Government Center, or don't go into Westville Correctional Facility, don't go into Bethlehem Steel? No, he said, go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Awesome. Mm -hmm. It's not, not an option. It's an order. That's exactly right. So your marching orders, you, your call is to go and minister to the men that are in, or the men and women? The, or no, the men? we just go strictly men. You're strictly the men's ministry. Okay. They send women to the women's prison Absolutely. Rock, Bill. Very good. So what's the, what's the deal with the cookies? Well, that's just part of the ministry. We give cookies to each inmate, every, every secretary, every CO. Every person we come in contact with gets cookies. And there's a special cookie recipe that the DOC has come up with so that the guys don't get too hopped up on sugar and stuff. You know? It's in your program this week. Okay, your, The special cookie recipe is in the program this week. And how can our folks here at LifeBridge, this part of the body, how can we serve your ministry? Well, the biggest, biggest thing in any ministry and anything, any part of life is prayer. There's a website you can get on called 3, the, the number, dayol.org. And then there'll be a link to go to Westville Correctional Facility where you can sign up in half-hour time slots. Starting, I think it's at 2 o'clock Thursday afternoon, November 6th, through noon or 2 o'clock Sunday, November 9th. <clears throat> to be so if you're a night owl and you stay up all night and don't have anything to do, pray for us for a half hour. <laughs> Sign up to do it. One word, though, make sure you get to write Westville. Believe it or not, there is a Westville Correctional Facility in New Zealand. Not that they don't need prayer out there, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, we're, we're focusing you pray, today you know, on Bill's ministry. Really, really wide awake in the middle of the night and you want to pray for an hour, pray a half hour for that one, too. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so you are going to be uh, going there for the ministry retreat yes. um, to be working with the men in Westville. We can be praying for you. And there's also something about cookies. Yeah, we need. We do thirty. 
we, you go through 3,500 dozen cookies. Not 3,500 cookies, but 3,500 dozen cookies mm -hmm. in a weekend. Every, every guy gets a half dozen cookies personally. And every day when we go in and we're going through the shakedown area, we hand the CEOs a bag of cookies. You know, you got to grease the wheels a little bit. <laughs> they can use a little touch from the Lord, I am sure, that, that just to encourage and them and what they do. On Saturday, the whole theme of the day on Saturday is forgiveness. So at the end of the night, when we release them back to their dorms, we give them a dozen cookies. That's a half dozen for them and a half dozen for someone they need forgiveness from or need to forgive. And they give those cookies to that person and tell them, here, I, I need to ask your forgiveness for this or that, or I need to forgive you for outing me in the chow line the other day. Yeah, <clears throat> awesome. Well, that's a wonderful thing to see, just, at, just Christ's love in action. And how cool. Thank you so very much for giving us the opportunity to serve with you. And our folks, um, the, the recipe is here. They ask that you do make this recipe, not your own. We know your grandma's no cookies Chippehoy. are the best. Yeah, no, no chip ahoys. It, it is the, all about the love and making these cookies by hand and praying over them. I love the instructions about how to pray for the people as you're making these cookies so that you can bless them. That's the them. biggest ingredient in the recipe is Absolutely. Prayer. And how do we get these cookies back to you? Uh, I have, have we coordinated I have that? cards okay. on we the have... table out here. Get a card. It's got my phone number on it. You can call me, or you can find me on Facebook. You can tell Anna to get me <laughs> on Facebook. Facebook and, or Frank, call the radio station. Tell Frank to tell me <laughs> I got cookies to wait. He is connected. We will definitely get him connected. He's going to be over in the uh, cafe area. He's got a table set up over there. If you'd like to know more or like to um, share with Bill, please stop by and visit with him. He'll be here all morning. We want to thank you for being here today, and thank you for your ministry. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Praise God for what you thank do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Bill. <laughs> awesome. God at work. Oh, God is so good. God well, yeah, okay, God at work. That's right. <laughs> you know, it's wonderful to see something new that, you know, opened our eyes. You know, they've been doing this ministry for years, but something new to our eyes that we may not have been aware. Um, just a couple of things that, other things that you might want to be aware of, of course, in our program. We've got lots of stuff going on. Um, I just, I know we had something else in there. Oh, yeah. Anybody know we're collecting yams? Yams! Yeah. Yeah. Sweet potatoes for 500 turkeys. You know, yesterday we went out to Town and Country Market and we collected this trailer full. I don't didn't even get the final count, but we've got, you might see stacks of food around here. It's starting to come in. November 1st, we'll actually be bringing all the donations in. And again, our 200 cans of yens have to be in. And I think we've got about 40. We need to, we need to make sure we get to the store. Town and Country's out right now. <laughs> We sold them out of yams yesterday. All right. Yeah. <laughs> but be aware that um, we want to make sure we get those in so we can do our part to help feed those 800 families. And again, any opportunity, if you'd like to come out and join in with any of those, please um, visit 500turkeys.com or uh, just keep your eyes out on our uh, daily devotionals and things that are uh, garden walk that's coming out. And there's all kinds of opportunities for you to help there. Um, also, Operation Christmas Child is in full swing. You'll be want to make sure that you bring your donations for the shoe boxes. Again, they have a display in the other room, and you'll want to make sure that you get those in so we can pack up those boxes of love to send to children around the world. Um, and in concert, got its uh, date changed. We're, we're moving it back just a couple of weeks so we could get more folks to participate. It is going to be Saturday, November 8th. So if you have a talent, if the Lord has filled you with something you want to share, we are anxious to to hear it. Um, Frank is coordinating the musical and the, the, the uh, all kinds of talent. We, the Lord has blessed too, us too, in so many ways. Too much talent to name. Mm -hmm. and we're there gonna... is a sign-up sheet out there. <laughs> is, so. Sign up with your talent, and most importantly, we want to offer it all to God. It is for his glory. We really want to get the opportunity to praise him together and just a great time of fellowship. So check out your program. Look for that. If you need more information, stop by and see me at the Welcome Center. And other than that, let's return to worship, because that's why we came here. Absolutely, absolutely. Because not only... Not only are we enjoying worshiping together, but we are worshiping and serving and praising a great, great God. The splendor of the King, the majesty, and 
all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his How great is our God!
what else happens we know we can always depend on you Lord I come I confess I'll wait here I find my just not just physically heal but spiritual emotionally heal
Pray with me. You are all that we need, Jesus. You are the reason we're here. We want to encounter your presence. We want to have your spirit meeting us right here and right now. Lord, help us to let go of the things that distract us from you, especially during this time. Focus our minds on you. Open our hearts to you. Speak to us through your word and your spirit. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I don't know if you... uh, if you know this or not, wow. Anybody? No, it's me. It's feedback from mine. Okay. So, uh, uh, I'm just that powerful. <laughs> All right. There we go. I don't know if you know this or not, but... Um, we, we got something pretty special going here. I mean, we really do. Um, this 
local church body, LifeBridge Christian Church, um, has has something about it that is that is so special, so powerful that um, when we have members that that go to China uh, for a year, that they Skype in every week to be a part of our church services. Um, we had people that talked to me this morning and, and shook my hand and said, uh, we were in Louisville, Kentucky at 4.30 a.m. this morning, uh, but we made it in time for service. <laughs> I, that's pretty, pretty powerful. When people leave this area, when they move from Valparaiso, Indiana, or Porter County, Indiana, wherever they were living around this general area, and they move to another part of the state or another state, the question I get every time never fails. Pete, how am I going to find another church like this? How, 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 will you help me find one like this? And, and I'll ask him the question, well, what do, you, what do you mean by like this? Because I know there's a lot about LifeBridge is kind of strange. And when somebody comes in and checks us out for the first time, it's like we're always mid-construction. We were over in a basement and we were tearing up carpet squares. I'll tell you what, I was praising God with every rainstorm we have gotten this season that we were not in the basement and didn't have to tear up the floor every time it rained because it would soak. We were saying, Thank you, God. You gave us a building that is mostly dry. Uh, this, this is an amazing thing. But they walk in and it's in, under construction. They walk in and it's the next Chinese restaurant and there's tables and there's chairs and there's a coffee bar. And, and uh, it's kind of tough when somebody walks in, they're trying to figure out what is this and what kind of church is this um, to, to put that into words. And so I've been really working on this and I've been praying about it and, um, and, and, I've, and I put this together into a statement that I think will sufficiently uh, explain to somebody new as they come walking into the door what kind of church this is. And, uh, and that's the statement you have at the top of, of your piece of paper there. We are a greenhouse with people walking toward the chair. I think that clearly defines what we are, right? We are a greenhouse, a greenhouse, but it's yellow. We are a yellow greenhouse with people walking toward the chair. I was going to um, insert another word in there, uh, which was naked. And so I was going to say we are a greenhouse with naked people walking toward the chair. Um, my, my, my wife thought that that might be a little too distracting, and so I removed that from your program and didn't include that. But what I'm going to do right now is give you a chance to, uh, to greet some folks. Now, there's another thing about this morning, and that is that you'll see that some folks have these green books because uh, earlier I was walking around and handing them to you. We would like everybody to have one of these because it's going to help you to follow along this morning and actually for the next five weeks. And so you're going to want one of these to, to make your own. Um, they are available. I got some up here. There's some over at the Welcome Center as well. And so while you're greeting folks, take a time to go ahead and grab a book as well as before we continue on with the service. So get up, say hi to somebody, tell them I have no idea what Pete's talking about. Uh, and now he's messed with my mind today. And uh, welcome somebody here today. A <laughs> greenhouse with people, naked people walking toward a chair. Pete has flipped out. He has totally lost it completely. Okay, now here's the thing. You need, you need to have one of these green books to help you out throughout the, the next several weeks. The very first thing I want you to do is to take this book, okay? Open up the, inside, open up the cover so that you have access to the green page here. And at the bottom there is a line. I want you to take a pen I want you to write your name on that line, as I am doing right now, because this is your personal book. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna walk you through uh, what I meant by that statement, but before I do that, I'm going to explain a, a few things about the book to help you, and you'll learn more over the next five weeks about the book as, as you're going through it here. But this book, what you have and what you will receive over the next five weeks, is uh, the culmination of work from the last 11, 15 years. 
um, studies and ministry and time spent and trying to understand what is it that God is calling us to do. And, uh, and so as we uh, compile all that and put it together, last week we talked about building an iceberg. What this is going to do is give you the tip of the iceberg about um, what it is that God is calling us to do. Just like Bill said a little bit earlier, there are parts of Scripture that, uh, that speak to us louder than others, but all of it is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. All of God's Word is there to speak to us and to instruct us. And trying to, comp- to boil all of that down and understand all of that takes time. It is a path, it is a process. What you're going to get over the course of the five weeks here is, is that path, a process which gives you kind of a top line, the tip of the iceberg, Roman numeral one, Roman numeral two, Roman numeral three, if you will, out of the whole outline. That's what you'll receive over the course of the next uh, five weeks, including today. And then this book will be your book for you to continue to build your iceberg, continue to build more depth to that picture, to add to it, a place for you to take notes, a place for you to put information in there. Now in your books, you have a, a, a light green tab that says 101, checking things out. If you open up to that page, what it does is it gives you a quick overview of this week and some of the scriptures that we're going to be talking about with a vision statement on the front of it. Uh, It says, see the picture and get involved. That's what this week is about. The scriptures below there are quoting from Genesis 2, Acts 2, and Ephesians 4. Now, the reason it is quoting from those three is that uh, I'll give you uh, the outline to your your piece here in just a moment. But um, the statement, a greenhouse with people walking toward the chair, is tied to those three uh, scriptures. When you open up further... On the back of it, it says checking things out, and it gives you a little bit of a summary statement of what we're going to talk about this week. And then behind that tab is going to be the iceberg. You should have, first of all, a blue piece of paper behind that tab. The blue piece of paper goes along with worship time, which is this week's actually half sheet, and uh, you cheated because you already have the blanks filled in. Uh, so if you have the one out of the program, it, doesn't, it has blanks for you to fill in, but the blue one here actually already has the answers for you. So I was nice to you, and I gave you that piece of paper. If you go behind the blue piece of paper, which is Sunday, then you'll have white pieces of paper. Those white pieces of paper are the daily devotions that those of you who have signed up for email delivery of daily devotions, these are the daily devotions you will be receiving via email Monday through Friday of this week. If you are not an electronic kind of person and you're more of a paper kind of a person, then I encourage you to read one of these a day for the next week. It will help build the iceberg, add some more detail to what we talk about today. The last thing that you'll see behind this tab is a green piece of paper. It's kind of a lime green, light green piece of paper. And it says additional reading. For those of you who have participated on i.imaginelifedifferently.com, it's very much in beta, and we're building a website that gives you even more detail, more to the iceberg that goes along again with these same concepts. The, The lessons on the website that go along with this tab worth of information, this tip of the iceberg. So it would be kind of the capital A, capital B, capital C under Roman numeral one. That is out on the website and it is self-directed. You create an account, it'll save your place. You go ahead and you chunk on through those. There is even more reading that goes along with the concepts we're talking about today. And the lessons that we have listed there with the little boxes and the circles next to them go along with that as well. Each week, for the next five weeks, we're going to fill out the pages behind these green tabs. You have one green tab that says checking things out. My book has four green tabs, and that's because uh, the rest of the outline is laid out in my book. And each week, here's your thing, Each week when you come here, here's your thing, each week when you come here, 
you will get a sec another green tab with all of the pages behind that green tab for you to put inside of your book. Okay, now, here's the next piece. Uh, mine's set up, hopefully yours is as well. If you just kind of grab it by the top, you can feel one piece of cardstock a little bit uh, higher than the rest of them. And then you can flip your book, and it should flip open to one that says, My Walk. My Walk is going to be a set of things for not only this series, but from here moving forward for the rest of time with LifeBridge Christian Church. Okay? The My Walk will give you tabs for specific areas of your walk together with God. Blue is for your worship services. Uh, brown is for your small groups. Green is for your personal steps in your discipleship. And the two red tabs have to do with ministry, either serving on a ministry team or having people that you're purposefully building into in your own flock. This will help you to organize uh, some of that. So for those of you who like organization and task lists and check marks and so forth, this is, you, you're just like in seventh heaven here because we're going to give you uh, things that will help you with that. The only one that we gave you information on this week is the first tab that says My Worship. And if you open up that blue tab, behind it you should have a little bit of a vision statement about worship uh, and a quote actually from Frank Guzzo, our worship uh, arts minister. And then behind that is a piece of cardstock that looks like your program. The reason that is there is that it will be a divider for this particular series. After you go behind, if you, if you flip that cardstock over, it'll be empty behind there. But if you look in your program, <clears throat> what you'll find, as I'm looking in mine, is that your program, your half sheet in the program looks funny. It's got all these little holes down the side. It has those holes so that it will fit into your book. And so when you take your cardstock from the program and you flip that over, now you can take your half sheet and you just put it there and kind of align it there and just sort of push it and push it and push it all the way down the line. And boom, now my half sheet is inside of my book. This is going to help you build your iceberg as well. If we had had this book with our last series, we did 20 weeks on Jesus. What you would have had then would have been a cardstock in the front that had the series name, the title, No, and that would have reminded you of the series. And behind that cardstock, you would have had 20 pieces of paper that, well, you would have had as many as you showed up for. Okay. <laughs> you, <coughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> No, it wasn't a guilt trip. I'm just saying this is building the iceberg thing, okay? We're empowering you. We're helping. We're giving you information. Then what you would have is 20 weeks worth of information about Jesus. So you don't have to go, oh, wait a minute. Pete said something about that sometime, somewhere in that series about Jesus. You'll be able to go like this and find the cardstock that has the thing on the series of Jesus, and then you open up and you start paging through your half sheets with your own notes and everything that you wrote in the margin and the doodles that you put on there and the Pete is stupid that you wrote at the bottom and all that kind of stuff, okay? You, you'll have it all right there. We're going to have things like that for the other tabs as well as we go along, but that's what you need to know for this particular week. Now, why in the world did I say we are a church or that is a greenhouse of people walking toward the chair? And why did I say naked people? The ideal picture that we point to uh, is in Genesis chapter 2. What is it we're trying to accomplish as a church? Where are we trying to go? By the way, you can follow along on your blue sheet, which has it filled in, or you can do it on your white sheet where you can write all kinds of notes. Either way is fine for this week. Once we get through the green tabs, you won't get blue sheets anymore for Sunday morning. You'll just have the white ones. I'm going to give you the blanks to fill in right off the bat. At Life Ridge, we are trying to be Genesis 2 people. That's your first fill in the blank. Within a, through an Ephesians 4 process, that's your second fill in the blank. As an Acts 2 church, that's your third fill in the blank. And now we'll go back and hit on that. Anybody who's been around me, they know that I use the phrase all the time, walking together with God. 
And when I use the phrase walking together with God, the picture I'm thinking about is Genesis 2, Adam and Eve in the garden before sin. It's a beautiful picture. It's the perfect picture. It's the only place where we have an ideal picture in an ideal time. The only picture that we have of an ideal person in a non-ideal time is Jesus. And that's why we say that we're trying to become Christ-like, not Adam and Eve-like. See, because Adam and Eve blew it, and they sinned. Jesus lived in a time like ours, and he never sinned. And so we say that we're trying to be Christ-like, not Adam and Eve-like. But in terms of the entire picture, what did God have in mind? What did he desire for our lives? We see more of that, I think, in Genesis 2 than we do in the messed up world that comes after Genesis 3. And so we keep going back to that picture of Adam and Eve in the garden. And at the end of that picture, it says... Now the man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. They were naked and unashamed. That's why I was going to say naked people walking toward the chair. Um, But that would probably be more distracting than it would be helpful. But it helps me to remember that the original picture was that they had nothing hidden and nothing to hide. Nothing hidden before God and nothing to hide before God. Nothing hidden before each other and nothing to hide before one another. It also helps me, it might not help you, but it helps me to remember that no matter how hard I try, I can't hide anything before God anyway. Before God, I am naked. I do have nothing hidden. Now, whether I have something to hide or not is another thing. Whether I have places that I have blown it is another thing. And I'm just like you, all have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have sinned. So there are places where I really wish God hadn't seen. I wish he wasn't there watching. Places where I am ashamed of my nakedness before him. It's in those times that I need to remind myself that God offers to clothe me and he offers to clothe you as well. Remember with Adam and Eve in the garden, they tried to cover themselves up. They did the whole fig leaf thing. And when they got done with the conversation, you know, the fig leaf just started the conversation. Why are you, why are you hiding? Why are you trying to cover yourself up? Well, we noticed that we were naked. Really? Who told you you were naked? You remember the conversation. At the end of that, it says that um, when their eyes were open, they felt shame at their nakedness. They sewed the fig leaves together. Later on in the conversation, it says, The Lord God made for Adam and his wife garments of skins and clothed them. God said, uh, you didn't do a good enough job here. And immediately God clothed them. Now, I like to remember the fact that not only did God clothe Adam and Eve, but God clothed Isaiah. Isaiah, the prophet from the Old Testament, He says, I am overwhelmed with joy in the Lord my God, for he has dressed me with the clothing of salvation and draped me in a robe of righteousness. I am like a bridegroom in his wedding suit or a bride with her jewels. I like to remember that while we cannot be righteous again once we blow it, God chooses to clothe us in righteousness. You say, well, Pete, that was true of Isaiah. But, you know, Isaiah did a good job of following God and doing what God called him to do. You don't understand my life. You don't understand how far away I am. You don't understand how much I've blown it. You don't get it, Pete. You don't know how far away I am from God. Well, you know what? I don't have to know how far away you are from God because it is never outside of his reach. It is never too far. No matter where you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how far away you have gone, no matter how many times you have blown it, God wants to clothe you with righteousness. He wants to put clothing on you that when He looks at you, He sees you as being holy as He is holy. Righteous as He is righteous. Paul wrote to the Galatian church that in Christ Jesus... You are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. In Christ we are saved. In Christ we are seen by God as being righteous. He covers us. He clothes us. 
And he removes the shame of our nakedness. He takes us back to the garden. We're striving to be Genesis 2 people. And I know that <clears throat> that's really hard because even if we come to God through Jesus Christ and we are clothed in righteousness, that, uh, that, that, that doesn't mean that that's what we're experiencing after that. Okay, so I give my life to Christ and I, I, I raise my hand and I bow my head and I say a prayer. I give my life to Christ and I, I, I go forward and I, I go down into the waters of baptism and I'm imagining Him washing my sins away. I give my life to Christ and, and so now I know that I am different. The old is gone, the new has come. The old man has died. The new man has, has risen out of the waters. I, I now have those pictures in my mind. But then I go back to life. I go back to my home. I go back to my work. I go back to the exact same habits that I had before. And I go, oh! Why am I doing that? I'm different now. I mean, maybe I stayed clean for a, a, a day or a week or, or a month because I really worked at it and I was so excited because I now have Jesus in my life and I now know that I'm clothed in righteousness and I now know that I am set free. But then but that something comes up. Something gets in my way. That old ugh, something comes back and gets me. And I get so frustrated. And I end up feeling like that why do I bother going to church? Why do I bother even trying? Because I, I, I blew it, and now, now God's not happy with me again. And what do I got to do? Do I got to go say that prayer again? Do I need to go back down into the waters of baptism again? Should I, should I be baptized for the eighth time? I mean, there's a point in all of this process where I, where I end up saying to myself, you know, uh, it's just not worth getting wet again. For one, it's just really embarrassing when somebody asks, you know, why, why, are you, why are you getting baptized again? Well, I blew it. No, you don't need to get baptized again. But you do need to recognize when you blow it. Repent. Turn back to Him. Change your mind. That's what repent means. Turn around. God, I know that you don't like this. I don't want to do this anymore. And you get back up on the horse. You get back into the game. You start down the path again. See, so it's kind of strange because this whole walk together with God, this whole, this whole thing, it seems like it's a moment in time thing when you get saved, but it seems like it's more than that, and that's because it is more than that. There is a moment in time thing, and there is a process thing. And the reality is that before you come to Christ and after you come to Christ, the whole thing is a process. You continue on this process your whole life. It's like a path, and you take it step by step. And one of those steps is accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But there are many other steps in that path, in that process as well. What you're walking toward is God until you receive God. But once you've done that, what you're walking toward is God's ideal picture for your life. What you're walking toward is holiness. Being holy as He is holy. Because while He looks at you and says you are righteous, while He looks at you through the blood of Jesus and says you are holy, you and I both know, and God knows, that when you do this thing that is called sin, that is not living who you are. There's a disconnect. Paul writes about that all the time in his letters. Peter does as well. That disconnect that we feel, that struggle that we have, because we recognize that in Christ I am one thing, but in my life I appear to be, I am doing something different. And that disconnect gives for us a process where we continue to grow. And that process is described rather eloquently by the Apostle Paul in a letter he wrote to the Ephesians in chapter 4. In Christ, Christ himself, he says, gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service. Uh, for some of you, this might be a little bit of a shocker. God did not give you staff members to do things for you. Huh? Huh? God did not give you staff members in the church to do things for you. God gave you staff members in the church to equip you to do stuff. Uh, you're, uh, 
I'm reading the same scripture you are. Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, pastors, and teachers to equip his people, you, for works of service. You work. No church anywhere, anywhere, so you can leave Life Bridge and go to another Christian church. You can live Life Bridge and find a different denomination. None of them are called to take care of your every whim. None of them, the staff members, are not called to do a whole bunch of stuff for you. What they're called to do is equip you to do ministry, for you to get in the game, for you to have skin in the game, for you to be an active part of his body. The process. It takes time. Every one of us is on a path. Everyone is, is on the journey. But you're going to have people that are challenging you regularly. Hey, where have you been? Hey, we've missed seeing you around. Hey, can you help with? Hey, can you do? Hey, uh, I heard that you're good at. Okay, don't go running for the hills. They're doing their calling in ministry to equip God's people for works of service. Uh, my, I, I, have, <laughs> I have people that, that say this about LifeBridge regularly, and, and uh, my, my parents, I don't know that they've ever really, uh, they, they've always just kind of be, been amazed by all of you. Um, the, um, they watch the videos on, uh, they, they would watch the videos on, on YouTube. Now dad has is, is gone to be with the Lord, so mom watches the videos on YouTube. And, and uh, <clears throat> she, she'll say this regularly. They both would say it regularly. They say, you, you guys are just always doing a lot of stuff. I said, yeah, we are. You're, you, I, I don't know how you get all that stuff done. A church your size, you know, we've been parts of churches that are ten times that size, and they don't do nearly the amount of stuff that you do. Yeah, you're right. Why? Because our calling is to equip God's people for works of service. And so I'm not trying to guilt you, nor am I setting a bunch of goals for things. What I'm trying to do is to make sure there's always stuff in front of you so you always have an opportunity for service. I want to make it easy for you to serve. I want to make it easy for you to participate in ministry. I want you to always have at least one, maybe two, maybe three things in front of you so you can pick one. And you can say, oh, well, I can do that. I can't do that and I can't help with that, but I can help with that. I can go buy yams. I can do that and bring that in. I can make stuff for the coffee bar. I can do that and I can help. I can do and, and always have something in front of you. Maybe you've had a pattern where going to church services every week is a part of your life. And so I praise God for that. Maybe you've had a pattern where um, uh, going to small group has been a part of your life every week. And so I praise God for that as well. But you know the other thing that you should have as a, as, as a part of your life every week? Every week you should be serving in ministry. In some way, in some shape or form. Now, I, you know, I know the whole, I don't have the time, and I know that I'm busy, but, you know, you're not too busy for soccer practice, and you're not too busy for your favorite television show, and we're, and we're not too busy for things that are important in our lives. See, life is filled with priorities. We are always choosing how it is that we're going to spend our time. Those three things should be an integral part of your life. Worshiping God in a group setting, being in a small group where you're talking about and building each other up in faith, and serving in ministry. All three of those, every week, should be a part of your life. And the question is, will you make that a priority? Will you put that in there? It's a part of the process. It's not the end goal. It is simply revving things up so that you get closer to the end goal. So that you continue to make those steps. All three of those things are a piece of it. It's in Ephesians 4 process. Notice what he says, the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. Until what? We all reach unity in our faith and our knowledge of the Son of God. We become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. That's the Ephesians 4 process, becoming more holy as he is holy. The fullness of Christ, the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. 
Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by waves and blown here and there by every wind and teaching and cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. How much time do we waste worrying about things that the world worries about? Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow up into Christ who is the head. For him, the whole body is joined together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. What are we trying to be here at LifeBridge? We're trying to be Genesis 2 people in an Ephesians 4 process. But the third piece is the environment in which we do it. That third piece we find in Acts chapter 2. The very first church, Acts chapter 2, we see out there, uh, uh, the, the church is just all excited. It's kind of the honeymoon period. All kinds of people have heard about Jesus being the Christ for the first time. They repent of their sins. Thousands of people are being baptized. The church grows like instantly. Boom! Now we've got a big church. And how does that church handle the fact that they are a big church? Well, they, they, just, they just keep going. They, they don't say, oh wow, this was a great one day. Now let's go back to our lives. That's not what they do. They don't go, oh, this is so exciting. I really love that. And then go out to lunch and talk about, you know, that preaching that Peter did was just awesome. And the fact that he changed his language to match mine, I, that was really excellent. I think we need to build that into our next ministry program, is making sure that each language is covered. No, that is not what they did. They went, what do we do now? Okay, now I've been saved. Now what do I do? And they stayed. And they got involved. And their lives changed fundamentally, dramatically. They didn't go back to their old lives. Look at this picture. When they had prayed, the, the place in which they gathered together was shaken. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They continued to speak the word of God in boldness. And the thousands, the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. Not any one of them said that anything belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. Notice what changed. They gave up their own comfort. They gave up their own security. They stopped worrying about the things of this world to the extent that they made sure that everybody had what they needed. Somebody was hungry among them, they were no longer hungry. Somebody didn't have shelter among them, they were no longer without shelter. Immediately, the body of Christ, the church, this group of people, immediately started to take care of one another, help one another, get through life together with one another. This was the church of Acts chapter 2. This is the kind of environment that, that, that facilitates the Ephesians 4 process for every single one of us. This is the kind of church that creates a safe environment for people to grow in their relationship with God. See, everywhere else we go, it tries to fight against it. Everywhere else we go, just like Bill said, they're telling us you can't bring Jesus here. You can't bring Jesus into your high school. You can't bring Jesus into this, in, in, into this civic center. You can't bring Jesus here because, you know, separation of church and whatever. They, they, you can't bring Jesus here. Don't tell me I can't bring Jesus here. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in this world. And the one who is in me is the spirit of the one who sent him. It is Jesus' spirit. When I walk into that school, Jesus is here. You cannot regulate that. You cannot put laws against that. Don't tell me that that can't be done. But you know what? That takes courage. That takes strength. That takes us you know, revving ourselves up before we go out there into that place where we know that Jesus is not welcome. That we know that God is not welcome in this situation, in this circumstance, and in this place. And you know where I get revved up? You know, you know where I get the strength to go back there? It's right here in the safe place. With you who believe. That's the church. We're creating a safe environment for growth. We build each other up so that when we go back out into the world that is fighting against us, no matter how tough the battle is, we're ready to go. That's an Acts 2 church. When those folks went out into the world, out of their huddles, out of their time together, 
Some of them got killed for their faith. Stoned to death. Crucified. Literally fed to lions for sport. And they huddled together. And they drew upon one another. And they built up their strength and their faith. And we said, we don't care. Jesus is the Christ, and that is what we're going to proclaim. Jesus is my Lord, and I am going to follow Him all the way to the end, whatever that end may be. You think that they didn't stay strong? You think that they fell by the wayside? They didn't. Where do you think they got that strength? Well, clearly from the power of the Holy Spirit that was within them. How were they reminded of that? By other believers in those huddles, in an Acts 2 church. That's where I got my summary statement. See, we're in a greenhouse. A greenhouse is a, is a safe environment for growth. doesn't matter what's going on out there, the wind or the snow or the rain or whatever. It's a controlled environment. It's an environment where growth takes place, regardless of what's happening outside there. That's the church. The church should be a safe environment for growth. We're a greenhouse. We're people. People, you want to say naked people? We are naked before God. People, real people, real problems, real sin, real people are moving on a process toward, toward God and His ideal. The chair is simply an illustration that I do where I take a group of people and, I, and I, I put a chair in the middle of the room and I say, now let's say that that chair is God. Let's say that that chair is God's ideal for your life. Now all of you start walking toward the chair. And we all start walking toward the chair. I said, you notice what happens to all of us too? We become closer in unity and faith in our knowledge of Jesus Christ. See? So, what is this church? It's a greenhouse with people walking toward a chair. That's all we are. That's what God has called us to be. And that's, that's the God that we give to in our time of worship our time of offering. And we're going to give a time of offering right now. If you'd like to give financially, those finances will go toward this ministry. Everything that God is doing here, encouraging people and building them up, creating a greenhouse where people are walking toward the chair. I give as an act of worship because I know that ultimately what I'm doing is giving to God. And so I encourage you to do that, but you never need to feel pressured. God will convict your heart if you're giving financially. You can take that Connect card that you filled out, though, fold it up and put it in the offering bag as it comes around, especially if you have a prayer request on there. I encourage you to make that an act of worship and just take that prayer request and turn it over to God and say, God, I trust you. Let's go ahead and give our gifts at this time. I'm going to tell you about Kairos, this prison ministry that comes inside them walls. It's a dead man. A lot of people say we dead man. I mean, I was just a mad man. Everybody got a story. But when you really get touched by God, that's when you know you got a real story. Well, my name is Tommy Fisher. I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. I grew up in the street gangs there. I got in a lot of trouble. I ended up doing 20 years, 11 months flat in prison. I had an aggravated life sentence. I wasn't supposed to never get out. I ran the gangs in prison, you know, and I hurt a lot of men for some crazy reasons. I used to actually get Christians beat up because they say they wanted to come to Christ. That's how crazy and radical I was. But the, when they pick Kairos, they only pick the worst inmates on the unit because they want the roughest dudes on the unit, the fools, to get changed. And this ministry is actually going in here and showing this love and changing people like that. I'm gonna tell you the truth, I went for their food. I didn't go to get saved, but God had set me up. When I was sitting there, man, you know, I was listening to this dude talk. You know when Paul was on the road to Damascus and Jesus, just Jesus' presence knocked him off that horse? I know for a fact I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. I felt it like Paul felt it. And from that day forth, man, God has just been blessing my life. While I was in that prison, I got into this Thurapon Theological Seminary and Bible Institute. I got a bachelor's degree in biblical studies. 
I also went to college and I got me an LBT. I just thank God for God bless me. I got a license to counsel, you know. And I really thank God for what he changed me into because I used to be a monster. I used to really be a monster. The only reason why I don't know if I ever killed a man because I never went back and asked the man who I shot was he dead. But I shot a lot of people and I hurt a lot of people's lives. But ministries like Kairos can go inside them walls and show a man God's love. Man, if I could tell anybody, anybody about Kairos, man, it's changing lives. Because I got to give God back what he gave me. He gave me back my life. He gave me them years that the locust stole from me. He gave them back to me. <laughs> and I'm thankful for it. When I was in prison, you visited me, he said. Prepare God's people for works of service, he said. You make those cookies, who knows who you might reach. I didn't go there because I wanted to get God. I went there for the food. And God set me up. <laughs> yes! Go, God. Go, team. If you make cookies, all you got to do is make sure that you get them to us. We will make sure that they get to Bill in time. We've got a couple of weeks here before they need to be done, and the information is in your program. With great power, the apostles were giving testimony, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and with great grace was upon them. This Acts 2 church had four things. I, I, I didn't give you the fill in the blanks for those four things, but it's on your blue piece of paper. You can write it in your, in your white one. There are four things that we notice there that we have here at LifeBridge so that you can participate and enjoy an Ephesians 4 process in an Acts 2 church. First is to encounter God in worship. Every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. The second is make it real in small groups. Make it real in groups. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts. They had meals together, including the Last Supper, which we're about to remember in just a moment here. The third was live it out, taking purposeful steps in their growth. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. And the fourth one was that they never quit reaching out to others. They empowered one more through ministry. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Encounter God, make it real, live it out, and empower one more. These things are available to you at LifeBridge to help you, to empower you, to walk together with God. But we know that the real power comes from God. It's through Jesus. See, the, the power to be saved came through His death and resurrection, which we celebrate right now as we take the bread and the cup. The bread reminds us that His body was broken, the cup, that His blood was poured out. We take it and we call it communion because all of us who believe that Jesus is the Christ do that and and there is a connection between us a communion between us because we share that faith with one another as the trays come around just take the cup and the bread take it at your own pace remember him as he said to do let's go ahead and take communion now
hope you'll come back next week <laughs> get your next green tab <clears throat> Genesis 2 people in an Ephesians 4 process and an Acts 2 church notice what happened and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved Jesus told us to go and make disciples of all nations. If you're looking for the process through which that happens, it happens when people strive to be Genesis 2 people through an Ephesians 4 process and creating a safe environment for growth and Acts 2 church. People see that. People were drawn to that. People were changed by that. And people come to Christ because of that. And you and I are a part of that. Praise God. As you go from here this week, I encourage you not only to come back, but bring somebody with you. Tell them you got these really cool green books and you'll give them one. Bring them on down. Enjoy. Let's enjoy this week. Go from here praising Him and worshiping Him. Show us. Show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your glory.
And remember, wherever you're going, you're bringing the love of Christ with you. So make sure that they see Him in you.